Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Miani here of Ace Games TV, and we're on Warlords of Draenor Alpha again to look this time at a revamp at an old dungeon. We're looking at the revamp for Warlords of Draenor, which is for this low-level dungeon version of Black Fathom Deeps. Now, I always thought that should be Depths, but regardless. So the storyline here this time is that they're basically... Um, Guys in here are worshipping this snake, um, the power of the old gods is controlling it or whatever. I'm not really too sure about the story in here yet, I've not really read up properly on it. But it is cool, it has certainly changed, but we're going to skip a lot of the combat to show you the bosses, because they're the coolest part about it. This first guy, as you can see, he's actually pushing off these poor guys, these poor orcs, these poor peons, into the water where there's these murlocs, which are essentially piranhas, are, are eating them. Um, pretty amazing. Look at that. They're just circling and ripping them apart. If we go in the water, look. Look at that. Christ. So this guy has pushed all of these guys in there. I've killed them with Starfall, um, so they're not really going to pose much of a problem. But this place has certainly changed, hasn't it? So, I'm not again, I'm not too sure... As to why this has changed, it just has currently, and obviously this is testing something that is not finished, I guess, um, and we don't know if there's going to be a heroic version for max level of this, I presume so, otherwise it's a bit weird to change just a really old dungeon. Now they're going back and changing a few things. This first thing here, actually, is something that a lot of people who hate jumping puzzles are going to rejoice for, because that allows people who keep falling down... Um, to simply fast track up there, or if you're running back after a wipe, hilariously, I don't think you can wipe anymore, uh, then you can simply use that rope. So this first boss, I guess, is the turtle, uh, which you're used to. Uh, he actually kills the guy here that's trying to essentially change it, or, you know, it's a bit like Tortoise for some reason, it has electrical abilities. Um, I didn't get to see any of the abilities because I just one-shot it. For the next few bosses, I'm going to let it melee me, I suppose. Um, but I'm sure that boss is a wonderful uh, in terms of his abilities. There are some really cool things in here I actually really want to show off um, that could one day be Warlock abilities. Now, you'll see what I mean when I get to it. So this is the next boss here. This summonous bitch. This is what I was going to tell you about. This uh, Void Walker just died. And it's pulling me in with a gravitational pull when I stand near it. And it keeps pull, uh, pulling me in and then electrifying me with damage. That's so cool. It's like a singularity or something. So we'll probably see more of that in the future in various encounters. That's for sure. We also have all of these tentacles in here that they're summoning. Like they're trying to summon this old god. Um, I'll let you work out the story for that yourself. But uh, essentially that fight would have just been... Um, ads essentially. Again, I killed her. I apologize. Not very good at this, am I? The buff still remains in here that you can get to your stats, uh, as has always been in Black Fathom Deeps, actually. That buff has always been there in some sort or another. So let's fast forward a bit to the next area through the Pool of Ascar. Do -do 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 -do. Boomkin swimming, kill a load of mobs on the way, because there's quite a few. Goodbye, piranha fish, murloc people. Yeah. This is something I wanted to show you here in a second when we get to it. Once I've got fast seas. Is, uh, is a giant tentacle. So, obviously, their summoning has worked. Uh, Akumai is the um, supposed... I, I don't think it is the old god. That's the, the last boss. It's got some connotation. I, I, again, I don't know. There's not really much in here to give me an idea of, of the storyline behind that. I'm sure some people already know it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. I'd like to think that I knew quite a lot about the lore of this game for, for quite a while. But a lot of this stuff, a lot of the new stuff, just hasn't um, really been, I guess, documented as well. Or we haven't just, you know, we simply haven't seen it yet. So, uh, that's to come. I thought this was a new Murloc model at first, but then I remembered it's kind of like the Oracle's model. So, a bit further down here, we have the next boss here. This guy is really cool. I do actually show off some of his abilities. Um, so, he has all these Murlocs in the room, but you can't attack. They will become, they will attack you, like, in waves uh, during the actual fight. Come on, hit me. There we go. He's actually using Tarok's Shadow Staff there. 
uh, from Tarok in Shadow Lo Shadow Lab Setic Halls, I think. One of those dungeons, anyway. So there's a lot of reoccurring um, models. Uh, he seems to be sucking or siphoning my health there. He grabs a random player and siphons him, so that's like a he heal through that mechanic. He has a basic melee attack, and he does this other attack here where he will essentially... Uh, he will essentially summon adds these tentacles, which you want to take down. They do some annoying things, because if you get grabbed like that, then the two tentacles will swipe and probably deal most of your health pool as damage uh, at low level, I presume. And if this is made into a heroic, then you can be sure that that will be a bit of a killer. So there we go, and then once we've killed this guy, it goes mental and summons loads of these tentacles and the murlocs at you. Um which is a bit unfair if I didn't have Starfall. And then is this over here, which I think maybe could have been used in the battle. I don't know. But uh, you can actually throw these pieces of meat at enemies and the tentacles will come out and kill the target. I'll show you that now, actually. Uh, we won't fast forward this bit. This is probably the coolest thing. This, you know, you have an infinite amount, but you don't have an infinite time. You've only got a few seconds of use of these. So, you know, it's it's a form of, you know, quick CC in, in killing the ones that are the most annoying, like this guy, perhaps. But he's running away. Um, use it on like a caster or something like that uh, healer, and he's dead. The tentacle raped him. So, you know, tentacle rape not sold separately. You get it with Black Fathom Deeps. Um, you should certainly invest in some today. Really cool feature. I love little gimmicky stuff like this. Um, I do like the revisit of this place. It did need to be done. I believe they already revisited it in some way, shape or form with questing. Um, but this has certainly added a... Oh, I certainly want to go and do this again. You know, if they made this a heroic, I would certainly go and do it. The thing about Black Fathom Deeps and most of these dungeons, like Maradon, for example, is they were, you know, not necessarily long, but just boring, honestly. And I think that certainly this has, you know, with, with the new technology, uh, like on this boss, for example, he's trying to catch um, this crab, basically. It's like he's a fisherman, and he gets angry because you get in between him and his catch, and he loses it. Watch this. And he's like, no, why have you done this? <laughs> and starts beating you to death, which is awesome. And then the crab disappears into the background. Uh, you can kill the crab afterwards. This guy has fishing-related abilities, like that uh, fishing net there. I think it's called Catch of the Day. And he will net you down, and then he'll do one of these ground pound smashes. You do have a few seconds to run away from it uh, after the net breaks. So that's the thing. But I can't imagine it doing that much damage anyway at the representative level. Uh, what is it, 25 or something? So that's pretty much all he does. It's very cool, though. I do like the addition of uh, the newer technology they used in Cataclysm and Beyond Dungeons uh, to be reused in the older content now. Well, newer older content, if that makes sense. So here's the, uh, the guy who escaped, the one that got away. Uh, this guy doesn't do anything particular, unfortunately. He's just a bit of a bonus. You don't... Uh, actually, I think you do have to kill him. Oh, for the bonus objectives, okay. So you don't have to kill him in a main run through the dungeon. But uh, your bonus objectives do give you bonus experience and uh, rewards for your random uh, dungeon with um, you know a pug grip or whatever. So it's worth doing. So let's go back up. And we've got to move into the temple proper now for the last two bosses. Uh, so through here, you may remember this area. I remember it well, actually. I actually remember wiping in here uh, in Burning Crusade when I was leveling through here. Um, difficulty has certainly changed since then for dungeons, and quite rightly so, they shouldn't be that difficult. So in here we have um, more of those void walkers look with that really cool thing. I left that mob alive to see what would happen. Now, actual mobs, enemy mobs, aren't affected by that pull-in effect, and I was kind of hoping they would be, um, but they're actually not. So that may be something that they could think about doing. Uh, you know, like, the the Voidwalker's implosion actually affects nearby enemies as well. That would be cool. It's certainly something I would like to see, like, an ability on a Voidwalker by, you know, an actual Warlock player 
uh, sacrificing his warlock to do an effect like that to pull in loads of enemies that would be a really cool move and I'm calling it now that'll be if not in this expansion in the next one because they always do stuff like that so this guy fires out these frost orb things and there's a projectile that keeps falling ice onto you and leaves horrible ice behind it that will hurt damage over time if you stand in it so it's kind of like a run around mechanic if you kept getting hit by it at the level obviously it would hurt so it's just a, a kite around to do damage until he breaks that move and then goes back to melee. And that's pretty much that boss uh, in a nutshell. So that gives you an idea. He's pretty cool. If you want to read any of the lore or you know the text, it is in 1080p. So you should be able to full screen read all of that. I'm not going to read it to you. But it's a story to do with the old gods and more of a lead up to something. But I'm, I'm not sure. If, I'm messing with a brazier here. You, the door's already open. What am I doing? Anyway, so <laughs> let's go to the last boss now. Uh, this place has changed a lot, actually. I remember there was loads of braziers you had to light to summon the boss. And that is completely gone. So there's more of these tentacles in here, and they will uh, throw crap at you if you don't kill them. They'll cause, like, earthquake ground pounds beneath you. So you just keep at range and kill them. If you go in melee range, they'll swipe you, obviously. That's the sort of thing that tentacles usually do. So there's only about five of them, and then we come down here, and there's a big one in the roof in a second that you can't actually target. And we come down here to the final bus. Oh, we can kill that one, and that one, okay. So this boss pretty much has ooh, two major mechanics. He's a bit like uh, the boss out of Throne of Thunder that I can't remember of with the three heads. Same model, in fact. Akumai is essentially fires poison at you. Uh, that goes on the ground and puts a poison effect. Uh, also a debuff on you. So you want to dispel that and heal through the rest of his damage. Just simply, you can actually sidestep this stuff. Uh, I will actually show you if he does it again. Uh, I think he's actually summoning more tentacles. Yes, he is. So he summons more tentacles that you can take down. Now, a certain percentage change, because the actually killing the tentacles does damage to him, as you can see, because I've not done anything to him directly. But killing the tentacles has taken off some of his HP, which is a lot like that boss in Final Defender. If you remember, you kill one head, it does damage to the body. You kill all the heads in a sequence, and then the body dies off screen. So it's kind of like the same thing here with this tentacle beast hydra thing. So there you go, he's summoning more. But at some percentage point, I'm not really too sure if it is percentage based or what triggers the change. He actually splits, look. So he's split into two heads. So they both have the same effects, which you can sidestep out of the poison projectile, which is obviously what you want to do. I was hoping to defeat the mirrored version there, but for some reason I actually killed the one, the main one anyway. It looks like he splits into at least three heads anyway. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the changes. I know I'm level 90, so I wasn't going to come on a level 20 and try and solo it. So that's the best you're going to get from me. Um, obviously all of the new abilities and stuff will be in the dungeon finder, all of that stuff. And all of the lore you can see in 1080p. But that's a preview of the new Black Fathom Deeps from me, Mione, on Ace Games TV. Be sure to check out wow.stratix.com for more written articles looking at all things Warlords of Draenor. And of course to subscribe to Ace Games TV for more videos daily on all things to do with World of Warcraft. And many other games from many other directors. So from me, Mione, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.